In this tutorial, we'll learn how to join two objects seamlessly in Blender, and how to hide the seam line between those objects. As you can see here, this is a separate object, joined to our Suzanne. And we can see that there is absolutely no border visible here, it's very smooth. We can even duplicate this, and move it to any other location. It remains glued to the target object, and adapts itself to the profile of the surface where we take it to. They are so nicely welded to the target object that they look like an integral part of the object itself. So today we'll discuss how we can do this in Blender. Let us first start with a blank new file. We will delete this default cube. Then, let us add one, monkey. We can apply this technique on any object, but this monkey has got a curved surface, which is good for a demonstration purpose. We'll make this surface little smooth. So go to the Modifiers tab, and add one, Subdivision Surface Modifier. Increase these levels to 3 or 4, and then apply the modifier. Let us also turn on the Shade Smooth option from here. Now, we need another object, which we can attach to this monkey. So, let us add one, Cylinder. We'll make it smaller, by a factor of 0.2. And let us also move it upward, above the monkey's head. We need some preparation for the cylinder, before we can attach it or join it with the monkey. First, enable the Shade Smooth option like the monkey, and then go to this Object Data Properties tab. Expand the Normals section, and enable this Auto Smooth option. In the next step, we need to move its origin point to the center point of this bottom surface. So go to the Edit mode. Enable the Face selection, and select the bottom surface. Now go to the Mesh menu, and under Snap, select Cursor to Selected. So we get the 3D cursor at the center of this bottom surface. Now go back to the Object mode, and in the Object menu, under Set Origin, select Origin to 3D Cursor. So the origin of the cylinder is moved to this center point, and remember that this is an important step. We can now hide the 3D cursor. Our aim is to snap the cylinder on this surface, but we don't want to join them physically. So we have to turn on the snap mode from here. Then from this drop-down, we have to enable this face option. Then enable these two options as well. Let us now pick up the move tool. As we move the cylinder near the monkey, you can see how the cylinder is getting attached to its surface, as if they have been joined together. This is how the snap tool works in Blender. And it is even changing its rotation, to follow the curvature of the target surface. But this is not very perfect, there are quite some gaps between the two objects. So we have to somehow deform our cylinder so that it sits perfectly on the round surface, and these gaps disappear completely. We can do that by using one modifier called Shrink Wrap. Let us first hide the monkey. Now select the cylinder, and go to the Object Properties tab. Remove all these rotation angles for the time being. We have to edit the mesh data of this cylinder. So go to the edit mode. We'll first remove this bottom face, so hit X to bring the delete menu, and select faces from here. Now turn on the vertex selection mode, and select all the vertices on the bottom end of our cylinder. We'll extrude them and spread them using the resize tool, so press E to extrude, then press S to resize. Move your mouse slightly like this, and click once to accept this change. Perfect. In the next step, we have to select these vertices, so press the Shift key, then the Alt key, then click once to select them together. If it's not working, you can also use the menu option which is called Edge Loops. Now, pick up the bevel tool from here. Then move this yellow handle, to add some bevel to this edge. Let us change the number of bevel sections to 4, from the operator box. We have to now assign all the vertices in this extended part into one vertex group. So go to the Subject Data Properties tab, and create a new vertex group. Then we need to again select these outer row of vertices, using the same method of edge loop selection. Before we assign these vertices into our vertex group, we need to give them a variable weightage, that will gradually change in this direction, from 1 to 0. So for this outer row of vertices, we have to first ensure that this weightage is 1, and then we can click on Assign. Similarly, we have to select the second row here. And for this loop, the weightage value can be 0.8. Now assign them. We'll quickly complete this for the other edge loops as well. We have used a step of 0.2 here, 
but if you want you can go for a further fine tuning. For example, you can add 10 edge loops, maybe with a step of 0.1 for each of them. Once all are assigned, you can verify from here that all the vertices are selected, so they are correctly added to this group. We can now go back to the object mode. The cylinder is finally ready to be attached to the monkey. So let us bring back our Suzanne. Then, press the G key for the grab tool, and move the cylinder on this surface. You can place it wherever you like. Now go to the modifiers tab. We have to add a shrink wrap modifier. We'll go with the default options, and in the target field, select the monkey. Then in the vertex group, select the vertex group that we have just created. Now the cylinder will be glued to the target surface, and it will look like an integral part of the same object. If you go to the material view mode, the borderline between the two objects will be hardly visible, it will look very smooth. Let us verify this with some real material, so select the cylinder, and go to the materials tab. We'll simply assign a copper material, which we have already created. And the same material should be assigned for the monkey as well, it will then look better. But we can see that a borderline, or a scene line, is still visible between the objects. So select the cylinder, and go to the modifiers tab. Minimize this modifier and add a modifier called data transfer. In the source field, select our monkey. This mix mode should be replace. And in the vertex group, select the same group. Then enable this face corner data and expand it. Turn on the custom normal. Now we can see that the seam line has almost disappeared between the cylinder and the monkey. Please remember that this custom normal will only work if you have enabled the auto smooth option right here. We can further reduce the seam line between the two objects by adding more subdivisions to our target surface. So go to the modifiers tab and add another subdivision surface modifier. We'll change these levels to 2. Now it will look perfectly smooth and no seam line is at all visible for these objects. In this way, you can add any additional geometry for an existing mesh, it will perfectly join. And later you can also change its position in whatever way you need. Also, you can duplicate this object and create another similar geometry, it will follow the same properties and remain attached to the target surface. If you simply join two objects together, you won't get this kind of a smooth welding between them as we see here. And remember, this effect will work best if you have the same material for both the objects. Shrink wrap is a very useful modifier in Blender, we have discussed some other applications of this shrink wrap in our previous tutorials. So I hope you like our presentation today. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to subscribe to this channel.